Welcome back to another episode of the Hormone Hub podcast, where we talk all things perimenopause, menopause, and have the conversations no one else is having. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Hormone Hub podcast. I'm your host, Kylie Pinwell, and I am fresh off the plane from Bali, so I'm feeling very excited and relaxed, of course. There'd be something wrong if I wasn't. But yeah, we had a great trip and the beauty of going on a retreat is it's not just a holiday, it's more than a holiday. It's also the beautiful opportunity to connect with like-minded women and also sort of set your intention about what is it that you would like to do differently. And I think this is one of the reasons I love going to Bali is it's just such a beautiful nurturing, healing environment that whatever way you come to Bali, you get to experience just that, that beautiful healing, nurturing, nourishing environment. And then as part of the retreat, we sort of have a look at what are the things in your life now that you love and what are you most proud of? What are you grateful for? And then we also look at, okay, well, what would you like to do differently? And I guess facilitating that as a nutritionist, particularly one who works in women's health, we generally steer it towards health, physical health, mental health, emotional well-being. You know, what would we like to change? What would we like to do differently? But then we take the next step and it's sort of like, okay, we map out how that's going to look and what it's going to look like. Because I think we all know the whole feeling of going on holidays and coming back. We just slot back into life as we knew it. And that's not necessarily what we want. We don't want to come back from a retreat and go, oh, well, that was nice. And now I'm back in the the throes of work. We already have a plan before we come back of just one step at a time, how we are going to do things differently. I'm going to share some of the the things that we talked about today. You know, our food and lifestyle system is broken. And I think we really notice this in countries like Bali, where they're eating whole fresh foods cooked from scratch. They don't have big chemist warehouse chains on every single, you know, there aren't big medical centers everywhere. So, You know, they're not walking around. You don't see a lot of overweight and obese people like you do walking around Australia or New Zealand or the US or the UK. So our goal should be, like number one, is to change our lifestyle, really address what are we doing in our life that we need to do differently. We talked about, you know, as you do with a group of women, weight loss and really Forking out $20,000 for weight loss surgery, forking out $1,500 a month for weight loss drugs, like these give us that immediate, oh yeah, that's a good solution, but it's not, and I see it time and time again, and I promise you that unless you change your lifestyle, this is not the answer. Because I have seen women spend the money on weight loss surgery, they drop heaps of weight, but they're not addressing that emotional side of why they got to that place in the first place. So then they're sort of stuck with this big 20000 they've spent, they've lost all the weight, they can't eat a proper meal because their digestive function has been compromised, but yet they can still get two litres of ice cream down that little sleeve. They can still pump blocks of chocolate down that little sleeve. So the, the lifestyle, the emotional side of why they got there in the first place isn't addressed. So the weight comes back on and more and they're worse off than they were before and particularly like feeling like a failure as well. So I think that's kind of something I wanted to address. But the beauty is we get to choose our lifestyle and making change is hard. Sure, I'm not going to say that that's easy, but we get to choose. And if we don't start taking responsibility for our own health, things are just going to get, you know, go go sideways big time. So right now, I want you to think about your vision for your health. Like what does your future health look like? So get clear on that. Like how, how much energy do you want to have? And I want you to think like in one year, five years, 10 years, 20, 30 years, how much energy do you want to have? How do you want your body to move? Do you want to be able to move freely? Do you want to be agile and mobile? Do you want your mental health? Do you want to be positive and upbeat and excited about life? 
So your health habits today are in honour of your future health. If you want things to be different, you need to start changing now. Think about what are going to be your non-negotiables for your future self? How do you want to show up in the world? You know, what it sort of circled back to is you can't solve a problem with the same way of thinking. So if we always quickly go to the doctor, if we go to the supplement, the medication, it's not enough. We need to change our lifestyle and our choices. Really tune into your body. Your body gives you clues and it's your responsibility to listen to your body. Okay. Now you are not a diagnosis. You are not a symptom. You are not a victim. Okay. Of your own health. You can turn this around. So think about like a new paradigm. What do you, what changes do you need to make to be in control of your own health. So what education do you need? What empowerment? You know, education is empowerment, right? Because the more we know, the more we can move this around. And you can choose to change. Uh, and I think that's the the key, choosing to do things differently. And I'm not saying that medication doesn't have a place because it does. But the thing is, we are just given, it's just handed to us. We're never told, how long should I take this for? When do I need to come off this? What lifestyle changes can I make so I don't need to be on this all the time? And certainly it came up, genetics plays a role, absolutely. But it's our lifestyle that turns these genes on and off. So this is something that we definitely need to pay attention to. Okay, so what do we do today that your future self will thank you for? What what changes can we make to make our future self happier and healthier? So first up, I want you to think about what's your goal? Why are you doing it? What are you trying to achieve? We need to really think about how we can switch on those metabolic switches, which we can do, and I'll talk about that in a sec. So first up, we need to think about varying the food that we're eating. Okay. We need to get our gut healthier. We need to get our liver healthier. How can we, you know, big one, it needs to be more than just about food. It needs to be addressing lifestyle as well. Such a big one for all of us is stress. And certainly cortisol can switch that metabolic switch on and off for for a a lot of us. Where we see that we're dysregulated or we've got cortisol dysregulation is certainly, you know, if you're experiencing anxiety or depression, that's an obvious one. But when our nervous system's dysregulated, our nervous system goes from, you know, and it's meant to cycle between rest and digest is when we feel happy and calm into fight or flight. Then what happens when we're in that fight or flight mode constantly, eventually we flick into freeze mode. And this is where we can't relax. So for all of you who get a second wind at night, or you find it hard to sit still and be still and be in your own thoughts, for people who say, oh, I just can't meditate, I've got too much, or I wake up at three o'clock in the morning, my brain is racing. Your nervous system is dysregulated. You flicked into that, that freeze mode. Our gut health, I'm going to keep circling back to this, is definitely affected by medications, by being on the birth control pill, if we had a lot of antibiotics as kids, and long ongoing medication does absolutely impact our gut microbiome and also our hormonal balance as well. So if we're experiencing big hormonal symptoms like hot flushes or we've got crazy heavy periods where we just keep bleeding or painful periods or migraines or headaches or anything like that, there's definitely an indication that something's not happy. This Hormone Hub episode is sponsored by our free Hormone Help Call. Book in your call today with one of our experienced advisors and we'll give you some clarity around what's causing your symptoms and some simple steps you can use straight away to improve your menopause experience. If you're ready to take the next step, book in a call and find out more about how we can help you have a smoother transition through perimenopause and menopause. Let us help you balance out your hormones, reset your metabolism and get your confidence back so you can live the life you're meant to. The link with all the details is in our show notes or over at kyliepinwill.com slash hormone health call. 
So how do we kind of like calm the farm? So first up, we need to think about what food are we eating? In places like Bali, you don't see, just like you don't see big chains of chemist warehouses and price lines and all of that, you also don't see big chains of supermarkets and you don't see big chains You know, there's a few fast food places, but you're not seeing masses. Most of the food is bought locally. It's bought seasonally and people are cooking from scratch. And I think this has a really big impact on things like blood sugar. And if we start to flip that old calorie kind of mentality into our blood sugar matters, calories don't matter. The quality of our calories matters. I think this will come out more and more is, you know, we need to be focusing on what foods impact our blood sugar versus just pure calories. Let's leave that in the 90s, peeps. Okay, so we do focus on controlling our blood sugar. First up, we need to eat real food. Okay, so food that was not made in a factory. Single ingredient, it has a short shelf life. And processed food, the idea of putting food in a packet is that it can sit on a shelf forever. Okay, Now, those chemicals is not what our gut microbiome needs. It's not what our body needs. Things like soy protein, uh, thickeners, emulsors, emulsifiers, preservatives, colors, flavors, seed oils. So all of your canola, vegetable, sunflower, safflower, if it's got any of those ingredients, put it down, walk away. So when we're feeding our sort of our gut and for a healthy gut, our gut loves diversity, variety. It loves plant and a variety of all of these things, a variety of colors, of polyphenols, of antioxidants. And I saw a ridiculous thing the other day about water and some freaking water filter that adds antioxidants into foods, into water. Like, seriously, what a load of shit. (laughs) How about we just drink, eat a better variety of veggies, right? And yes, drink more water, but we don't need to pay stupid thousands of dollars for, no, anyway, (laughs) I'll get a bit ranty on that maybe in a later episode. But yeah, where was I going? More plants, (laughs) more colour, more variety. Because when we kind of like say to ourselves, oh, what do I feel like eating? you know, then our body goes and it's our, like, if you think of it as your gut, bad gut bugs are screaming out, oh, I feel like a glass of wine. I feel like chocolate. I feel like sugar. I feel like salt. By having those things, we're continually feeding our bad gut bugs. So we want to feed our good gut bugs instead. And we do this through plants and we want to starve those bad guys because the more we feed them, the more they want. And the reason our gut bacteria is so important is because it plays a huge role in breaking or making our hormones, making our neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, which you know give us our, our happy, calm feelings. And when we have too much of our bad Gut bacteria, this is where we see belly fat, back fat, arm fat, (laughs) all of those things we don't want. So think plants, think your prebiotic plants, which is all your fiber, probiotic plants, which is your fermented uh, foods. That's what our body needs. For our blood sugar, we also need protein. So protein and fat together, you've heard me talk about this a million times, is the anchor for our blood sugar. It's good for maintaining our lean muscle mass, keeping that blood sugar regulated. And protein is also really important because it helps us make serotonin, which is our happy hormone. So if we're experiencing anxiety, depression, we're not making enough of those, those neurotransmitters. So eat more protein, eat a variety of plants and eat some healthy fats. So stay away from the the processed seed oils and things like that. So fat does not make us fat. We've left that in the 90s with the calories. It's excess insulin that makes us fat. It's a messed up gut that makes us fat. It's stress that makes us fat. Okay. So it's not avocado and nuts and seeds and things like that that make us fat. So I think that's a really key point. If we're struggling with weight, it's insulin, our gut, stress, and ultimately our liver because it has to process all of those things. So that's what we need to be paying attention to. So we want to just consider lifestyle um, as our way out of chronic disease. 
So it's our lifestyle that's going to stop that cycle of food and pharma and dieting. Think about what's your intention with your lifestyle? Create a body that's healthy today. And this is the body that's going to serve your 90-year-old self, all right? So what's the goal? Why are you doing it? What are you trying to achieve? Is it weight loss? Is it coming off medications that don't make you feel good? Is it avoiding disease? Vary your food, okay? Think about feeding your gut microbiome, feeding your good guts, lots of your good bugs, lots of plants, and starving your gut bugs that are screaming out for sugar, alcohol, salt. How do we get your cortisol levels down? This is a big one when it comes to lifestyle. We live in a cortisol-driven world and there's so many of us, and I'll put my own hand up for this, who struggled with dysregulated cortisol. If we think about health isn't a symptom, it's not a diagnosis. When we release oxytocin, if we think of a hormone hierarchy and if we think of oxytocin as being at the top, um, and oxytocin is released when we have children, like childbirth and when we breastfeed because it promotes love for that baby. Um, but oxytocin naturally relaxes cortisol. So when we give a compliment or give a hug, or give a smile. Think of it as sending the person we're sending that to, we're giving them oxytocin. They smile in return, they're giving us oxytocin back. This is why people sort of, I guess, heal better at home because they're around loved ones. So we can't heal a body that's in a stressed out state. So we need to really think of how do we bring more love into our life and how do we bring more connection into our life? We talked about this a lot while we are away. The intention for your future health needs to be a bit more than I, I want to lose 10 kilos, okay? So I want you, like if this is sort of, a, or if you have a health goal, like think about who will you be when you lose that 10 kilos? And the 10 kilos is just an example. How will you think, you know, how will the person who's lost 10 kilos think? How will you operate? What will you be eating? How will you be moving your body? How will you be connecting with other people? So you want to drill down and get to your why. And this is when we start to really switch that uh, metabolic switch. And it's unique to everyone. Your health now is not a symptom. It's not a diagnosis. It doesn't operate in a silo. We need to think about that lifestyle framework. So our food, how we're feeding our body, what we're thinking, how we want our body to be in the future and how we can bring down that cortisol response. So I hope I haven't jumped around too much today. <laughs> I had a lot to say about this and I think certainly moving forward, we don't need to be looking for supplements, for a medicine, for anything. It's how do we change our lifestyle? So this is something that we do. This is something that I do with my clients. So if you're looking at how you can get started with this, where do you start? Certainly coming on our October retreat would be a great start. We've got the hormone code, the hormone reset as well. And, you know, there's certainly lots of options for lots of different budgets. If you do want to work one-on-one -on -one with me, we do have the hormone code program. We will drop all the links in the show notes, but have a beautiful day and think about who are you going to be in a year, 10 years, 20 years. All right. Thanks for listening and bye for now. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. You can head on over to the show notes at kyliepinwill.com slash podcast where you'll find all the links. Now, before we go, it would mean the world to me if you'd head on over to your favorite podcast channel, subscribe and leave a review. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Then stay tuned for next week's episode and can't wait to see you then.